Princess Diana, and I'm here to talk to you about me. You know, my life wasn't really a fairy tale. I kind of worked hard for who I was. Life wasn't easy growing up because of a lot of issues I had. I didn't really care what people thought of me because I just wanted to be me. I was born July 1st, 1961 in San Diego. Park house. When I was seven years old, my parents got a divorce. It was hard on me and my brother. There was often disharmony between me and my brother and my stepmother because my father remarried. I, I worked part-time for um, the, as a nanny for the American, American family of four, and I was a preschool kindergarten teacher when I was younger at a private school. I was baptized in the St. Mary Monkley Church in San Diego, and I was still a baby. 1987, I visited AIDS patients in the hospital of London. Most people thought it was a big, big deal that I shook hands with an AIDS patient, but it wasn't. When I was younger, I worked on getting rid of landmines so that children would play in the fields, and I even walked across the field myself. Some say that I changed the way the people looked at the royal family. Most people thought they were just snobs, and I was one of the most popular in the royal family, and today I still am. I started charity work in the late 1980s. I also had a nickname when I was younger. It was Shy Die. I didn't care for it too much, but it wasn't the worst. In October 1981, I found out I was going to have a baby. June 21st, 1982, I had a boy named Will. He was the first one. After that, I also had two sons, William and Henry. wasn't really a fair tale as you can see. I died because of a traffic collision in August and it wasn't too bad. I got through it. But I always said I knew I would never be queen of England, but I would be queen of people's hearts. Thank you. Hi, I'm Theodore Roosevelt. I have come here today to talk with you all about my life. I was the leader of a war in 1898, and like I used to say, believe you can, and you're halfway there. I was born October 27th, and I was born into a pretty wealthy family in New York City. And I had died January 20, I died January 16th, 1919. Um, I had a very sheltered childhood because of a disease called polymary embolism. Pulmonary embolism is a disease where a blood clot forms inside of one of your arteries in the lung that could cause you to have a stroke and die. I was the leader of a Spanish-American war in 1898, and my family owned a successful plate glass business. I used to weightlift and box. I also had, uh, I also helped expedite the Panama Canal. Later in life, I became the youngest president in history. After becoming the president, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I was a member of the famous Hasty Putting Club, and, and I was in a boxing accident, causing one blind eye. Also, my wife and mom both died on the same day. I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize and given the key to the city. I also helped build the Panama Canal by my money. And after my death, I was awarded the Medal of Honor and named posthumously. Then I became the 26th president and had my face put on a monument. Some more um, major accomplishments are my face was put on Mount Rushmore along with Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and George Washington. I founded many national parks, including Grand Canyon, Grand Tetons, and Yellowstone National Park. 
Did you know that Yellowstone National Park is actually the largest national park and is located on a super volcano? Crazy, right? In conclusion, I had done a lot of great stuff in my life. Many people looked up to me as a leader. I th do you think I'm a leader? <laughs> Remember, believe you can and you're halfway there. See you next time. Gotta go lead a country.
I was I made toilet paper on eight on December eighth, eighteen fifty seven. I was in commercials from eighteen sixty seven to eighteen ninety. I made toilet paper whenever I was thirty years old. For me, that was really young. I was a really creative inventor, most people say. Let's get on to my other facts. Toilet paper is 162 years old. That's really old. If I was still alive, I would be 192. I moved to New York and stayed there till I died. My product was first used as a medical accessory because they thought that it would heal your wounds. And 70% of the world really doesn't use toilet paper today. I moved to New York for my job and I produced good hygiene and prevented some diseases like hepatitis A. Like I said, I was in commercials for a very long time. I didn't get the idea of making toilet paper out of nowhere. I got it from other people. No one knows for sure when I died because it was a really long time ago. I forgot to. And a lot of people say that they still can't believe that one man, I, Joseph Gaetti, changed everyone's lives today. Well, that was all. Bye.
I had a bunch of quotes, but that was one of my favorites. Thank you, and once again, I'm Helen Keller. Hi, my name is Jane Austen. I did not go to school, so my most of my education was reading Abbey Girls School. I was born in a village in southern England, and I was a famous novelist. One of my most famous books was Mansfield Park, and I was most known for my sense and sensibility. I was also the first female author, and I wrote comic stories as a child. One of them was Susan, which is now Northanger Abbey, and I sold Susan for $10 to a publisher. I also wrote Eleanor and Marie. Most of my novels are about my outlook on life. I got five romance readers awards and one audio award. And I wrote Emma in 1815 and I wrote Lady Susan in 1871. I didn't have children nor did I get married, so my novels were mostly my children. I had a little known brother named George, and I got my life saved by one of my little cousins. I was also the first writer to use the phrase dinner party, and my family didn't think that I was worthy enough that I was an author to be put on my gravestone. in the studio 
writing or singing, and acting in movies. Oh, I wrote a poem called I in the Membership of My Days. And that was before I died of a rare cancer like my dad had. I was a part-time musician as well, even though I already mentioned that. But I also played some instruments, like guitar, piano, and yeah. I was courageous through all of this. Well, time to conclude. I was, th I was courageous through all of the events that happened in my life. Like, like I said, my dad's death, and then me on the than me dying after the second movie of Harry Potter released. I was not afraid to take chances. Like, I almost didn't take the role even after my granddaughter threatened me, but I did, because I loved her. And I did not care who saw me. I, like I said, I was courageous and brave. And I was smart, because if I did not take that role, I would not be the man who I was today. And I believe I was a role model, role model for almost everyone in the world. And I was unique and very crazy. Like I once almost, um, I can't remember what it was, but yeah.
I married at the age of 18 on August 25th, 1886. I had my child, Rose Jane Wilder, December the 5th, 1886. I wrote 12 books. Little, and here are some of my books. Little House on the Perry, Little House in the Big Woods, Long Winter, and Little Town on the Perry. I won the John Newberry Award four times. I, a library actually named an award after me. It's called the Children's Literature Award. And it was a big deal to me because they actually appreciate my work. I have four siblings, Mary Amelia, Carrie Kalisa, Charles Frederick, and Grace Pearl. Charles Frederick died of him when he was just a little baby, and it was very heartbroken. I ran away because I thought it was my fault, but it wasn't, luckily. I died February the 10th, 1957. I died at the age of 90. I died because of brain bleeding. It was very stressful, and my husband died a few weeks earlier. And I want to say something very important. Remember me with smiles and laughter, for that's how I remember you all. If you can only remember me with tears, don't remember me at all. Thank you for listening. Bye. I gotta go see my grandkids. and I came back to speak with you. I am very famous, and when I get later into my cards, you'll know one thing that I was very famous for, but I wasn't famous for it too much. I had one sister, one brother. I also lived in a big house with four family members. I was born February 2nd, 1914, in Corpus Christ, Texas. I had cancer between 50 and 80 years old. I know, that was very old. I was the youngest out of the two daughters. I also loved to skateboard and play volleyball. It was one that I almost like fell in love with. I earned several awards but they were mostly TV awards. I had a quote that I created that I made for cancer that I read to myself every night to remember that my family is there for her. And that quote is, Cancer is my own private war. The strength, the nausea, the fever takes turns challenging my strength, my mind, and my spirit. Basically, that means a whole bunch to me. Like, I don't even know how much. Like, don't even count because it means a whole bunch to me. Now, remember that thing that I said I was very famous for? Well, here it comes. The red bathing suit. I know. It's just a red bathing suit. I don't know. Boys... Back in the old days, like, I don't even know. I also cut my own hair. Another thing I did was dye my own hair. I, I had 30 inches long of hair. Think of how long your hair is compared to mine. I know. Farrah had several famous quotes, but I'm only going to tell you one of them. And that is, my number one goal is to love, support, and be there for my son. And remember, Everything has positive and negative consequences. Also remember, this one comes in big play. Actions do have consequences too. Now thank you for listening. Hi guys, Terry S. Truman here. I've come to, back from the grave to tell you about my life. I was born May 8, 1884 in Lamar, Missouri. I was the 33rd president of the United States, and my wife was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bess Truman. Our daughter was Margaret, Margaret Truman Daniel, and the S in my name does not stand for it. Here is some of my early life. I was raised on a farm, and when I was young, I moved to the city. During president, I dropped. Uh, during while I was a president, I dropped a five-ton bomb on the Japan, the Japanese cities of Nagasaki, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And that's my early life. I helped found the United Nations, and I ended World War II. I was a county judge, and I was also a senator. I was vice president for Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I was in the National Guard, 
I survived an assassination attempt, and I was the only president not to go to college. I served 82 days as vice president, and I almost doubled minimum wage for citizens. I, after I ended World War II, I cleaned up afterwards. And I died December 2nd, December 26th, 1972. If I was alive today, I would keep trying to succeed in business and keep trying to help you. Born March 2nd, 1904. Who's that? Sorry, that's me, Dr. Susan. Yes, it's me, the person that made some of the most funny, popular books and movies. Hopefully you know some. Or I rose from the dead for no reason. Wait, I still have to tell you about my life. Born March 2nd, 1904, like I said before. I wasn't a normal baby. This is why, because I was born in a theater. Crazy, right? Well, when I was a kid, some people thought I was born. But really, I'm like you guys. I, like sport. I used to like sports when I was a child, but I still had a love for doodling and drawing. And I was the first kid to use the word nerd. Now this is my major accomplishment. Here's a good one, The Grinch Stole Christmas in 1957. Horton Hughes, who was a good book and movie. In my first ever book, I thought I saw that on Luke Bear Street. Now, here's my little known facts. I have, a, I have a closet full of wacky hats. I thought kids were I thought kids' books were boring before I started writing. And I came up with stories by doodling. Sadly, I died of oral cancer on September 24th, 1980. <coughs> I have to go back soon. Just remember, you will succeed. Yes, you will, indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. We'll have to go now. Bye.
I died April 15, 1865. I hoped to change the world. If I was still living, I would be almost 110 years old. Look at the time, I gotta go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Albert Einstein. The synonym for my name is genius. I skipped classes because I was so smart. The FBI spied on me for four years. I have a lot more to tell you about. I was born March 14, 1879 in Germany. My parents were Hermann Einstein and Pauline Koch. I dropped out of school in 1894. That was my early life story. Now moving on to major accomplishments. I sold the riddle of photoelectric effect. I came up with rest energy through my famous equation, E equals MC squared. I proposed general theory of reality. Now moving on to little known facts. I played the violin from when I was five to 15 years old. I got S as a grade in math, and you don't want those. I failed grade school. My brain was stolen in a jar after I died. And if you find it, contact me. Now, conclusion. I once said, imagination is better than knowledge. Well, um, the FBI is here. I've just got to go before I get in trouble. Bye. solo across the Atlantic Ocean and had many flying experiences when I was young so I was set out for destiny. I had many world records and even had my own airplane but that's enough of not into much detail stuff but I'm going to talk about my early life. I was born July 24th 1897 in Atchison, Kansas and I was a total tomboy. I love to climb trees and even do something called belly slamming my sled. And I had a very loving family, but didn't get much social experience. I was how schooled until I was 12, so that wasn't too great. But I mean, at least I at least I was getting education. Anyways, like I touched on earlier, I did have my own plane called the Electra, and it was made by Lockheed Aircraft Co. And even had my first flying lesson on July, G January 3rd, 1921. And even set a world record for rising 18,415 feet for autogyros. But 
a little known fact is my plane was found way, well not way, but a little bit off of Gardner Island, which was a tiny island. I was going for Howland Island, but sadly missed it from running out of too much fuel. And there was a naval search for me after I disappeared, costing over four million dollars. And I wasn't the only one in the plane, sadly. My navigator, Fred Noonan, was also in the plane, severely injured from the crash, also died. But there is a lot of confusion. No, I was not the first professional woman pilot. That claim actually belongs to a woman named Ada D'Acosta. She was in a vacation, and she, uh, she got permission to actually fly someone's aviation machine. She did, and she was claimed the first woman to ever professionally fly in this above ground. But a lot of people know that my bones were actually found. It wasn't my whole skeleton, but it was, I mean, a big chunk of it. But they were lost in a museum of all places. It could have been shipping or anything. It was seriously in a museum. Uh, but then my death was on January 5th, 1939. Of course, my cause of death was that I disappeared. But I believe I was an aviation revolutionizer and had a very good life, and I feel like I can be a big role model for women, but along with men. And I feel like you should try doing whatever you like, no matter how hard you try. Don't worry. No matter what happens, it will have been worth the trying. Hello, my name is Albert Blazes, and do you like your freedom? Well, if you do, you can thank me because I was in World War II and I stopped World War II because I helped them. I played football, uh, I also played football for 15 years. Played football, I played for the New York Giants. Uh, I also went to William L. Dickinson High School uh, for three years, uh, six years, but I dropped out of high school. I was born January 5th, 1919. I also set the Army's hand grenade throwing with a, a record of 94 yards, 2 feet, and 6.5 inches. Uh, I also scouted on enemy lines whenever the um, whenever I was. They almost caught me, but uh, luckily I got away. Uh, people thought that I was missing, but whenever they found my body, uh, they thought, oh, they knew that I was dead now. My, my years of service for World War II was 1943 through 1945. Uh, I also died on January 1st, 1945. I lived in New Jersey. My actual name is Albert Charles Blazes. And, well, if, did you like me? Well, if you did, I have to go back to my grave because I have to get to one of my games. Bye. Imagine this. Hats. Not just a few, a whole closet full. Well, I have a whole closet full. But if you don't know me by hats, you have to know me by cat and hat. Hi, I'm Dr. Seuss. I was born March 2nd, 1904 and I was raised in Springfield, Massachusetts. I was sometimes bullied. Not only did I do art, I also did sports like soccer. I got married twice to Helen Palmer and Audrey Diamond. My wife had children, but I did not. I got a ton of rewards, but I'm only gonna mention a couple. I got the Primetime Award, and obviously Children's Books Awards. And I made cartoons during World War II. Like I said, I loved hats. They would help me write. For instance, I would go into my closet and I would just pick a hat. And I also tried writing for adults, but I failed. And Cat in the Hat was published on March 12, 1957. And I wrote Green Eggs and Ham on a dare by one of my friends. One of my books got rejected 27 times, and I also named my pens. Well, I died on September 24, 1991 due to oral cancer, which is mouth cancer. But I taught you a little bit about me. 
There still could be more facts nobody knows. But before I leave, here's one of my famous quotes. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. Hello, I'm a found I am the founder of McDonald's. I eat for about every single month. I'm gonna tell you some very interesting things about my life and career. I was born on October 5th, 1902, and I died on January 14th, 1984. I lied, I lied, I lied for my age to get into a job. I started, I started my job with the McDonald brothers, but sadly they betrayed me. How did they betray me? They didn't, they didn't let me change the plans to make the building better and more tables and seats. So I decided to build my own restaurants. Today, it, um, right now, it is called McDonald's. It started off very unpopular. It is now the third best restaurant in the whole world. The first restaurant is now closed and now a gift shop. It is the best known fast food restaurant though. There's something called the McDonald's gold card so you can get unlimited fast food and the only person who has it is Bill Gates. The company is worth $11 billion. We feed about 10 million pounds a day, um, and we also give up the most amount of toys. My death happened when I ate too much chicken nuggets. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me coming back to the dead, from the dead, bye. MLK, also known as Michael Luther King Jr. I made a big speech to stop racism. Today, I'm going to tell you how my life went. I was born January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. I have three other siblings. My dad is a pastor slash minister at Dexter Avenue Church. For grades 1 through 5th, I went to Booker T. Washington. When I was 16, I took my dad's job in preaching and being a minister. Then my parents, at the age of 11 and a half, changed my name to Martin Luther King Jr. I won many awards and medals. I made my I Had a Dream speech at the age of 20. There were almost 250,000 people there. I have 750 streets named after me. I had a meet and greet, and I was shot and killed. I died at St. Joseph's Hospital that night. The favorite quote that I wrote was, Faith is taking a step, even when you don't see the staircase. I hope you like that quote. But two rules that my parents made me go by is to be respectful and to be kind. I hope you like my life story. Wait, what year is it again? Hi, my name is Rosa Parks, and I've come back from the dead to tell you some facts about me. I was born February the 4th, 1913, in Tuskegee, Alabama. My parents, um, Leona and James, were farmers and did other jobs as well. Me, and my, my parents sadly split up, and me, my brother, and my mom moved to my grandparents' farm on Pine Levels Hill. I went to an all-state teacher's college and dropped out to care for my sick grandmother. I've had so many major accomplishments, but I think my best one was fighting for my rights and choosing to um, refuse to give up my, choosing to refuse to go, not giving up my bus seat in December the 1st, 1955. Like I said, I knew someone that loved to, that, that loved to take, I knew that someone had to take the first step and that that person had to be me. So I moved. It was not the first time I refused to give up my bus seat. And the bus was a symbol to me of equality for, for, for me. When I was a child, I had watched all the white children get on the bus and I, me and my other classmates had to walk. I'm so glad for the one that made the speech, Martin Luther King. 
People say I refuse to give up my seat because, because, but that's not the truth. I mean, people refuse. People said I refused to give up my seat because I was tired, but that's not the truth. The only thing I was tired of was giving in. Bye, I have to go. I had fun telling y'all some facts about me. Remember, one person can change the world, and that person can be you. Hey you, yes you, sitting in that chair. Do you know who I am? I'm Franklin Morris, and I'm a pretty cool guy, unless you get on my bad side. I was born on September 1st, 1926 in Washington, D.C. I, li I lived in a foster home most of my life and I was adopted by a loving and caring family that lives in Florida. Oh man, do I have some major accomplishments. I learned how to sew 50 raincoats and I know how to dig a hole with a spoon. I found, I was a, I found out I was a mechanic by making a drill out of a vacuum. Not a lot of people know about me, but I have some pretty cool stuff. I had a job at Alcatraz. I was a barber, not a very good one. Well, before I go, I guess I can tell you some interesting facts. Number one, I went to Alcatraz for breaking and entering, burglary, armed robbery, and bank robbery, and more. Number two, I was sent to Alcatraz in 1960. Number three, my inmate number was A. Z one four four one. Number four. I disappeared June eleventh, nineteen sixty-two. Number five. I had a very high IQ of one hundred and thirty-three. Number six. I was born in Kentucky. Well, ye doggity, I hope you learned about me. My name is Bob Ross. I am a very kind, famous, and talented artist. I have come here today to talk a little bit about my life. First, I was born in Daytona Beach, Florida with my mom and dad. My mom being a waitress and my dad being a carpenter. I was in the military for part of my life and I did like caring for animals. Out of all those animals, I did have a pet squirrel named Peabody. Some of my major accomplishments were I was one of the greatest artists. I won a Twitch Stream of the Year award because everyone watched me. I have books about me, but I've never read any of them. I have got on some TV shows, one of them PBS, but I made no money, which is kind of sad, but I didn't really care. And out of those books that have been that people have made for me, I also have my own art supplies. I don't really like my afro, I just did it for all my fans, and part of my left index finger was missing, but I guess now it's here whenever I came back. I do have 403 episodes on my TV show. Hi, I am Judy Garland. Although there are many actresses, there is only one of me named Judy Garland. I was born on June 10, 1922. I died June 22, 1969. I was married five times and had three children. Three children were Liza Minley, Lorna Loved, and Joey Loved. My five husbands were Mickey Dean, Mark Heron, Sydney Love, David Rose, and Vincent Minley. Some awards I got the Academy Juvenile Award in 1940. I also got a Golden, Golden Globe Award in, for Best Actress in 1955. Another award I got was for Hall of Fame in 1910. Here is some little facts about me. I was acting on The Wizard of Oz, and I always said I wanted to be a nurse. I am only allowed to work four hours a day while filming The Wizard of Oz. The dog who played Toto actually liked me. My first time on stage was when I was two years old. I am terribly scared of them. It's time for me to go. I like my speech. Bye. I am a singer, actor, grandpa, father, son. I sang 149 songs, I have 10 hits, and I'm an actor in at least 36 movies. I'm a grandpa of one, and, a, a, and I have a brother that's older than me by 35 minutes, Jesse Garrett Preston. I'm a father of Lisa and uh, Presley, son of Gladys Ann and Vernon.
play. Presley. I'm a husband of Priscilla and Wagner. Priscilla and Wagner. I'm Elvis Presley. I come back to tell my story. Mine begins simple. I was born January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi. I died August 16, 1977. Now, my favorite song that I made is Jailhouse Rock. I graduated in 1953. Might not, might know me, but not everything. Things I like to do with I, look, I collected guns and badges. I did karate. I liked reading. My favorite food is fool's love, and I love to dance. My favorite color is pink and white, and in the 1950s it was blue and white. My favorite song is known only to him, and it was also my mom's favorite song. My favorite sandwich is peanut butter and banana. And my hair is not naturally brown and black. My dad was born June 26, 1970. Princess Diana of Wales. I was loved by the public and well known worldwide. I am very fashionable and I was also a role model for many young girls. I mean, what girl wouldn't want to be a princess? I was born Diana Frances Spencer on July 1st, 1961 in Norfolk, England. My parents divorced when I was seven and it was hard on me. I had an unhappy childhood. I stayed with my father and didn't get along with my stepmom. I worked several low-paying jobs when I was young. I was a dance instructor for youth, but quit after a skiing accident. I also worked as a nanny and a party hostess. Then I became a kindergarten assistant. I married Prince Charles and became Princess Diana of Wales. I supported many charities and worked to help people with HIV slash AIDS, cancer, and mental illness. I support I was a mother of two boys, Prince William and Prince Harry. I was on the cover of People Magazine 81 times. I was listed among the 100 most important people of the 20th century by Time Magazine in 1999. My sister Sarah dated Prince Charles before me. I was the first royal bride to have a paying job before marrying. And over 750 million people watched my wedding on TV, and 600,000 people lined the streets just to get a glimpse of us. Speaking of weddings, I had a 25 foot long train on my wedding dress, which was the longest in royal history. My favorite color was pink. My life came to a tragic end in August 1997. I died in a car crash with two other people because of the because the paparazzi was chasing our car. My funeral was one of the biggest televised events in history, and 2,000 people attended, and over 2.5 billion people watched on TV. As you can tell, I lived an unusual and interesting life. I just wish that I could have lived to meet my adorable grandchildren, Prince George, Prince Charlotte, and Prince Louis. I'm a famous inventor. I invented millions of things. For instance, the lightning rod, bifocals, and I helped edit uh, the Declaration of Independence. Hi, I'm Benjamin Franklin. I was born January 17, 1706. I have nine brothers, uh, no, not nine, 16 brothers and sisters, and I've only had two formal years of education. And my parents named her Josh and Ava Gil Franklin. I owned Omnock for 26 years. I invented bifocals. They're the glasses that you can, if you look, uh, if you want to look close up, you can look down, and if you want to look far away, you can look up. 
Um, I helped edit the Declaration of Independence. I invented the Franklin stove. Um, in other words, a wood stove. Um, I was an ambassador and helped um, serve an alliance with France. Um, I formed a, the public college of Pennsylvania, or helped form. I, my, sadly, my son died at age five, and I was an unofficial retirement for half of my life. I formed the first public library. I was the oldest founding father of the United States of America. I established the first volunteer fire department. Over 20,000 people went to my funeral. I discovered that lightning could help electricity. I helped make America, America, and I'm very talented. some things about me. I was unmarried my entire life. Well, that is because most women wouldn't be able to do what I did my entire lifetime if they got married. And I had six brothers and sisters, and I was the second oldest out of all seven of us. Here's some things about my early life. I was born in Adams, Massachusetts on February 15, 1820. And later, at the age of six, moved to Battenville, New York, because my father got a new job. But not even all of my brothers and sisters were born when we moved. So most of them were born in Battenfield, New York. And at, sadly, at the age of 17, I had to move away from my family and went to the boarding school in Philadelphia. Because, our, and I had to later leave because my family was financially ruined during the panic of 1872. Here's some of my major accomplishments. Most girls now are able to vote, but when I was 18, I couldn't vote because it was illegal. So I wrote to the president at the time and said, I think it is wrong that women shouldn't be allowed to vote. And he still denied, but even though I voted illegally, he still denied. I gave over 100 speeches in my entire lifetime for 45 years without stopping. And my best friend, Elizabeth K. Stanton, Help me with every single speech. And finally, I helped abolish slavery and because I went to the first anti-slavery convention and it, I just fell in love with it, so I helped abolish it. And here's some of my little known facts that most of you may or may not know. I was born the day after Valentine's Day. I could read and write by the age of three. Most of you think, might think now that that's pretty impressive, but it actually runs in my family. And I had a silver coin after I was died because I was honored. And I didn't even know I was gonna be honored. I was, my middle name stands for Brown. I go by Susan B. Anthony instead of Brown. Here's my conclusion. Well, one last thing is, I was born a hundred years before the 19th Amendment passed, and I'll be 200 years old next year on March 15th, I mean February 15th. I, sadly, I died because of pneumonia and a heart disease on March 13th, 1906. Here's one last thing I have to say. My, my favorite quote, women must not when women must not depend upon the protection of men, but must be taught to protect themselves. Well, I wrote that, and it's my favorite group. Well, now, girls, remember to vote when you're 18, because we couldn't, and I worked very hard, too. Hello, everybody. I'm Hank Williams, and this is my life story. When I was born, I had a lot of ups and downs, and I had a good and tragic life, and when I passed away, I became a country legend, I think. I was born out in Alabama, September 17, 1925, and I was born with this disease, not well known today, called spina bifida. It's a disease in the back, 
and that later became made me become a alcoholic. My dad was Alonzo Alonzo Williams and died of facial hair, facial paralyzation later when I was seven. My mom is Jessie Lilybell and um, my dad was also a Freemason. Later I had eight awards, one Grammy Lifetime Award, one Grammy Best Country Collab, and one Grammy Hall of Fame. And then I had also two other country music awards and another and some others. Some facts that you may not know about me is that I learned music from a black street musician and this was in 1976, uh, I, mean, I think. And my first guitar costed $3.50 and I had a 52 Cadillac. And I already told you this, but my dad was a part of the Freemasons and not many people know that. In conclusion, I had the best car you could have in 1953 or before, and I died in that car, tragically. And I died of a heart attack, and it was on New Year's Day. And that's my life story, Hank Williams. I'm Jackie Robinson, and people usually say I'm the best at everything I do because I'm always trying my best and I'm a hard worker. And I always have, always have a special quote, quote and this is, a life is not important on an impact has on other lives. I was born January 31st, 1919 in Cario, Georgia. I was, I was a baseball and football player and I was a John Deere High School. And I went to Pasadena Junior College and I also went to UCLA. And some, some of the major accomplishments I have, I was 1947 Rookie of the Year. And six, I was six time all star. I was a stolen base leader. And I was the first African American to play baseball. So, well known facts. Most people didn't know that I went to the military. I was also a pioneer, and I also played tennis. And one, one cool thing about me, I accepted for a four hundred dollar contract for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And like, like I said earlier, my people say I'm the hardest worker. I always show my best. People always say I'm the greatest of all time ever for baseball. And don't forget, life is important, and the impact it has on other lives. Yes, it's me, Cleopatra. I died over a million years ago, yet I'm here. I was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt. I ruled by myself for a very long time. I'm known for my dramatic love affairs and being a queen all by myself. But let's get started into the story. I was born in 69 BC, and I became a ruler for the very first time after my father's death at age 18. Now, this was very tough for me, and everyone thought that I should have a king ruling with me, but I decided to rule alone, because that was my passion. Now, this all happened until I met a guy named Caesar, and long story short, we had a little field trip to Rome. And it turned out that Caesar, he had disobeyed the queen and king of Rome. So he had to stay in Rome after a war broke out. It was very chaotic. Me and my son Caesar had to flee back to ancient Egypt. Now, this is where I wasn't queen anymore because everyone went against me. Now, another guy came in and he wanted to be king. His name was Marcus Antony. And my brother, Ptolemy, they decided that they would run up and go and try to become king. If what is called today an election. Now, Antony, he won the election. And he decided that he would make me queen again and let me rule by myself. Because he knew that that was my passion. 
Now, another war broke out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it turns out that Anthony had killed himself because he thought that I was dead. And he, if you would call it, loved me. I also loved Anthony. So I had killed myself because I didn't want to live a life without Anthony and my children. Now, I knew that I lived a great life. I had a movie made for me in 1963. I inspired the play by William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. And, um, yeah, that's all. Now, look at the time. What? Now, look at the time. I gotta leave. Well, I hope you guys pursue your dreams like I always do. Goodbye. Hello. I might struggle a bit because a scientist took my brain, so I'll do the best I can. You guys probably know me as a scientist, but there's much more. My name is Albert Einstein. I was born March 14, 1879 in Ulm, Georgia. Germany and grew up in Munich, Germany. I got married in 1903 and divorced in 1919. I had three children and I worked with the Compass since I was five years old. Um, some of my character traits that people uh, know me as was grumpy, crazy, and smart. I only agree with one of those smart well until I got lost my brain. My favorite food was fried eggs, mushrooms, sour cream, and squared pie. I was also a vegetarian. My favorite books were called Nun and Human of the Treasure Nature. My father and uncle also owned the company. Um, now let's move on to some of my major accomplishments. I answered, why is the sky blue? I split the atoms and of course got the Nobel Prize in 1920. Um, I also solved the riddle of photosynthesis, and some of my favorite quotes that I made, quotes that I made were, um, once you meet your limits, go beyond them, and you never failed until you stop trying. I picked those two because I thought that they're the most truthful. Now let's move on to some of my little known facts. Hitler disliked me. I don't know why, but he did not like me. He now made public enemy number one also. I dropped out of college after seven years to became a paint officer. And then I went back to school and became a scientist. I named my violin Linda, and I offered the Nobel Prize to my wife during the divorce to show her how much I cared for her. Well, I think I lived a pretty good life. I died April 19th, 1955. Well, I'm gonna go see if I can find my missing brain, but I don't know what they did to it. Hi, I was a singer and an actor. Some people know me by King of Rock, some people know me by Elvis Presley. I was a role model for both boys and girls, women and men. I look fashionable for a guy when I sung. Hi, I'm Elvis Presley, and today I'm going to be sharing my early life, my major accomplishments, and my little life facts. To begin with, with my early life, I had a brother, and he was born 35 minutes before me. His name was Jesse Garen Presley. I was born January 8, 1935. I entered first grade in East Tapello, Consolidated. Five years later, I entered sixth grade in 1946, September, Memphis, Tennessee. Now for my major accomplishments. I sold over 600 million albums worldwide. That might be a lot to know, but that's what I did. I also helped pave the way for rock and roll, and that was my popular sound. I had my job from 1953 to 1977. On March 24, 1958, I was drafted into the U.S. Army. A lot of people know this, but I died because of a heart attack. But not a lot of people know this. I had one kid named Lisa Mary Presley, and I had one granddaughter named Riley Kidd. 
Six years later, I married Priscilla Preston in 1967. Six years later, we divorced in 1973. In conclusion, I had three famous quotes and one famous saying you might already know. My first famous quote is, ambition is like a dream with a V8 engine. The second one is, truth is like the sun. You can shut it out for some time, but it ain't going away. The third one counts. May God bless you as he has blessed me. I can't keep the audience waiting. I have to go soon. Elvis has left the building. But before I go, I'm going to give out these VIP plus passes. And I have four of them. Whoever gets one of these, please meet me backstage after my performance. Oh, I like your hair. I like your crown. You too. Oh, I like your hair, man. That'd be all for today. Hello, my name is Abraham Lincoln, and I was, uh, and I was a president in 1836. I was born in 1809, and I grew up on a farm, and I was born in Arden, Skyline. I led the Union to victory in the United Civil War, and I never gave up in that. I ended slavery in 1863, and I wanted women to vote in 1835. I had a cat named Tabby and a dog named Fido, and I was also a little bit in the Bible. And I was also killed by John Wilkes Booth. was also a very brave hero. Hi, I'm Princess Diana. My dream was to become a ballet dancer, but I became a princess instead. Most princesses have a happily ever after, but that wasn't the case for me. I was born July 1st, 1961. My brother John died when I was one years old, and my parents divorced when I was seven years old. My first job was to be a nanny for an American businesswoman's toddler. I gave birth to the future king, Prince William. I was on People's Magazine 81 times, and I joined many charities. I, was, I joined one of the most famous families in the world. I listed among the 100 most important people. My sister Sarah dated Prince Charles first. My 12th care engagement ring now belongs to my daughter-in-law, Kate Middleton. My 25-foot 20 wedding dress is the longest in royal history. My favorite color is pink, and I was a kindergarten teacher. I was not a strong student. I didn't need to become a da ballet dancer because I became a princess. More importantly, I became a mother to two successful young men, Prince William and Prince Harry. Sadly, I passed away on August 1st, 1997 in Paris, France. Hopefully, my children and grandchildren have the happily ever after I never had. My name is Martin Luther King Jr., but that's kind of a mouthful, so you can just call me MLK. You may have heard my name before. It's probably because I got you a day of school in January, but I did a little more than that. Before I tell you what I did, let's start at the beginning. I was born January 15, 1929, and I was in the middle child of three kids. Of course, I had to be. Me and my father were American Baptist ministers, too. I'm known for being the civil rights leader, but I was also the very first president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, also known as the SCLC. I also got a Nobel Peace Prize. I was also the youngest recipient to receive it. And who has inspired all of this is my hero. Everyone has a hero. It could be your mom, dad, 
or anybody. Mine is Gandhi. He has a very calm nature and has inspired most of my quotes. Like, hate is too great to burden to bear. Gandhi taught me, one person can change the world. All you need to do it is courage and your voice. He taught me that you can make today a be you can make tomorrow a better place today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rosa Parks, but my full name is Rosa Louise McCallie Parks. You can just call me Rosa. I was born in Tuskegee, Alabama, February 4, 1913. And soon after that, I moved to Pine Hill, Alabama, and lived on a small farm. And not long after, my little brother Silvester, Silvester was born. I was also the great-granddaughter of slaves. Some, some of my major accomplishments are, I have got inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame, I also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and in 1980, the NAC awarded me the Mark Luther King Jr. Award. That's some of them, but not all. Tuesday marks 60 years ago since I refused to give up my seat to a white man in Montgomery, Alabama. Some more. And some things you may not have known about me is there's a museum about me. A sheep dog, a guinea pig, and a frog as pets. And that is all. I hope you learned something new about me and who is your inspiration. Hey you. Yes you. Do you know who I am? Well, in case you didn't, I am Marilyn Monroe in the cutest outfit on your ever see. Today, I'm going to be talking about me, Marilyn Monroe. My early life are interesting facts about me. I was born in Los Angeles, California. My real name is Norma Jeanne Mortensen. I died August 5th, 1962, and I got the name Marilyn from my mom's maiden name. My major accomplishments are things that I am proud of, like I made a total of 29 films in my life. I have a I have a Hollywood star. I was also the first woman to get a script and director approval in films. Little known facts are facts you didn't really know about me. I would have been 92 years old today. As a child, I was in and out of foster care and state and state care. I never knew my mother and father, and I had a dog named Moth, and he was a golden retriever, and he was named after Mafia. I also had a hard time memorizing lines. After my death, I was buried at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in Los Angeles, California. I hope you guys liked all my facts about me. And remember, do what you love and never be afraid to inspire others. Hello, my name is, he my name is Francis Bacon. I was born on January 22nd, 1561. I was educated at home, and I was considered the father of the scientific method. When I was born, I had poor health. I was sick, and I had to stay in the hospital for a while. And I was, I wrote my first book when I was eight years old. My uncle was a chief advisor of Queen Elizabeth I. I was a member of the Parliament and I was also Queen's Council. I served for over two queens. After my death, I remained very influential. I investigated all things that were naturally marked, like in the forest or by a river. Uh, I discovered a new turn in the theoretical framework for science. I died on April 29th, 1626.
a major accomplishment for me was in 1959 I started a tractor company called Trattori Lamborghini. After being insulted by Enzo Ferrari in 1963, four years later I started a car company called Automobili Lamborghini. It was instantly a success. Some little known facts about me are in the early 90s my company was bought by Audi. The emblem of the Lamborghini is a reference to Terrace the Bull, an Italian fighting. I was held as a British prisoner of war, and my favorite car was the Jarmo, which had a V12 and power windows, very rare for the 70s. Yeah. Do you know who abolished slavery? Well, that's me, Abraham Lincoln. And also, and today I'm going to be telling you about my life. Also, today is my birthday. I lived in a cabin when I was little. But then later in my life, I moved to southern Indiana. And I also learned how to farm when I was little. I was a boatman as a teenager. I love school as well. I became a congress. Then I became a lawyer. Then I became a president on November 6, 1806. I did a speech called Gettysburg Address. I also brought our union back together. I was the tallest president. I was also the first president to have a full grown beard. I am a gifted storyteller. I also told funny jokes. I also have four sons. Their names are Robert, Ted, William, and Edward Lincoln. Thank you for listening to my speech. Thank you for listening to my speech. Whatever you are, be a good one. Thank you.